Right, it's Scott Picaric here with your mental floss. Boom! All right, I have not done one of these in a while, and I decided I was also going to show off, if you haven't seen it already, uh, the Tumor Tales shirt. Uh, we did go on a very um, awesome 5K on Saturday, and my God, was it cold. Oh, it's cold and snowy, but it was the brain cancer 5K over in St. Paul. Uh, I'm wearing the uh, the outfit today because it's awesome. Um, and then also, just you know, I want to get back into doing these uh, these mental floss uh, little live sessions. I know a lot of people have missed them. Uh, one of the problems I'm having today, though, these sunglasses are so dark I can't see anything. So I almost got to pull them off. Um, so hey, Brian, Norm, Norm, call Jeremy, uh, Mark, love you, man. Kim Pamela. Anyway, so uh, today, I, you know, my, my show notes, I got in front of me here. I just want to cover a few things. Number one is I don't really want to talk about cancer. I don't really want to talk about brain cancer, but I'm going to talk about uh, stress and ways that you can let go of stress in your life. Um, you know, one stressor for me right now, oh, good, my wife is picking up the kids, so they will not be uh, uh, at the bus stop by themselves. That is awesome. So one thing about stress is, and I'm going to talk about a little bit in the context of having like, you know, chronic illness, uh, it can have a major impact on that. So you want to use different uh, uh, techniques in your life to get rid of it because it makes you sick. It like literally makes you sick. If you got something, it makes it worse. So uh, I don't get very stressed out anymore. I've learned to kind of just, well, if you talk to my wife, she'll say I'm a freaking liar. But I, um, one of the techniques I use to help uh, get rid of that stress. And I'll tell you, when I found out I had cancer, I was really stressed out. And then I started doing like this fasting for like a week, you know, eight days. And then, you know, not eating that stressed me out a little bit too. Um, but I do meditation. Uh, there's an app on, you know, tons of apps for it. I use the app called Headspace. I know some people don't love that app. You know, whatever. Find one that works for you. Another one is Insight Timer. But, uh, you know, it's just a little app on my, uh, of course, it's not going to work right now because I'm trying to do this live. But, you know, a little app on my phone. It says, letting go of stress, and that's my favorite one. And you could pick a male or a female voice, depending on your, uh, your preference. I usually, uh, you know, I actually alternate back and forth. So this one here, male voice, you could do 10 or 15 minutes, whatever, just really simple. Yeah. I ask you to imagine what it would feel like to be free from that emotion. Yeah, can you hear that? You out, whatever it is. And it's freaking awesome. I just kind of want to zen out right here and, and put it in. I usually put my headphones on. Uh, I lost my second set of ear, ear pods or AirPods, which sucks. Uh, so I got these old crappy ones, but they work. And you want to keep that cell phone away from your brain, everyone. Uh, I am going to talk about that in my Tumor Tales channel about um, the potential negative effects of that electromagnetic field in your phone. That is a story for another day. Uh, today, though, meditation is awesome. You guys, 10, 15 minutes of meditation just clears you out. It's so amazing. You got to try it. I used to just think that, you know, people who meditated were like, you know, either like Sherpas climbing the Himalayas or, you know, these guys who, you know, haven't bathed in three years, who, who rub, uh, um, you know, frankincense on their nipples or something, or, you know, patchouli oil on their butthole or something, you know, that was, that's how I saw it, you know, you, you had to be to, uh, to be a, a, you know, someone who meditates, it's completely wrong, I was wrong, I was so wrong, I was a complete dumbass for not getting on this train sooner, and you guys are dumbasses if you, no, no, it's just kidding, but you got to get on this train, try it out, do not be a, do not be a meditation denier, all right, it is powerful stuff, just clears out the stress, so you, you know, whatever you got going on. Uh, second thing is exercise. <gasps> Who knew? Who knew exercise can help with stress? Oh, it also cures like obesity and like all kinds of other things. All right. So, uh, you know, go for a walk, you know, roll down a hill. I don't know. Do something. Do some like, like, you know, some push-ups for God's sakes or, or squats, air squats. It doesn't even matter. Get my goal is an hour of exercise a day. That, that can be walking. I got 45 minutes this morning. I'm going to go for a little bike ride, hopefully with the kids when I get home tonight. If not, I'm going to go with myself. I'm going to pout and just go for a, you know, a, a silent bike ride where I just cry that no one wants to go with me. Uh, another thing I do is what's called buffer days now. Um, uh, not buffer days, I'm sorry, focus days. 
where I, I don't go to the office. I work either from a remote location, you know, over fly, in flyover country, the bunker, or I, you know, go to a coffee shop or, or I stay home and I just focus on like the bigger picture items. And that, it, it just really, I got to look, pull up my glasses. Hey, Rick. Scott, Tom, Corey, Cam, Molly, Roxanne. Sorry, I can't see these glass. I cannot see my screen. I can see my other screen, but I can't see the screen I'm talking on. It's because it's, it's my life. That's why. Uh, anyway, so do these focus days where I just, you know, I just, I don't necessarily tune out the world, but I kind of do. And I get so much done and it's so like relaxing. I'll put on like some jazz or something and just, you know, just chill out and work and read and, you know, get, get just massive amounts of, of work done because I'm, I'm just focused and dialed in and it's, and it's really good for the stress. Um, so anyway, so yeah, the, 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 you know, letting go of stress, that's today's theme, whatever you do. Hey, share what you do to let go of stress. If you're really giving an awesome idea, I'm going to give you one of these shirts. You got to give me your address. You want to want a pr private message me. That's fine. Just don't say anything weird. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you one of these awesome shirts that, you know, promoting our, our tumor tales, YouTube channel, it's the greatest YouTube channel God ever created. Trust me. Uh, check in. It's where I chronicle my uh, my adventures through the uh, 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 fighting cancer through uh, you know non-conventional means. It's it's actually pretty awesome. I'm going to take on the the tough issues like I do on my podcast. We're going to do it uh, related to all the shitty food choices and and decisions we make towards our health and how I'm trying to get people to be more accountable to their to their personal health care choices. All right. There's some really simple things we can all do to be healthier, have healthier lifestyles. And, you know, start by reading the label on your food that you're eating. And if you, you know, if the, if, if the list is this freaking long, uh, don't buy it. It's full of shit. All right. So anyway, um, more on that later. So uh, today, a uh, troll update. Now the trolls, I'm telling you, I get nervous. I think the trolls, they've been very quiet, too quiet. I have no idea what the hell is going on with the trolls. I know they're out there. They're probably not picking on me because they, they found out I have a brain tumor. But they, they were sure ready to pick on me when I didn't have one. God, I said I wouldn't talk about the tumor, but here I go again. But no, uh, I'm, I'm, it, I think the problem is I need more troll bait. So I will be um, coming up with some more troll bait ideas. I don't have any nose hair, so I'm going to have to get creative there. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the literary device today I want to get into because, again, I, I know that the, the universe is less smart because I haven't been doing this. Uh, juxtaposition. Uh, I love the word juxtaposition. It's a literary, literary device comparing contrasting of two or more differently, usually opposite ideas, characters, objects, etc. This literary device is often used to help create a clearer picture of the characteristics of one object or idea by comparing it to another. Uh, a good example of that is um, uh, da, 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 Tale of Two Cities, uh, Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, the other examples of that, you know, two siblings in a story where they're opposites. Um, if you've seen the play Wicked, uh, you have, you've got um, the, the, the witches. You had the uh, Glinda and, oh, gosh. Somebody tell me the other witch. Um, so who's Glinda and who else? Damn it. Ah, uh, so bad. I don't remember. But I know the people have seen the play Wicked. It is pretty awesome. It is like the Wizard of Oz retelling and, I, I actually, my wife loves it. Her sister loves it. I think they've seen it like 80 times. Uh, I've seen it once, but I would probably see it again. Uh, one character lives on the good side. Another lives on the bad side. Juxtaposition. Uh, Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, the um, uh, the Montagues and the Capulets, I believe. And I'm not cheating here. I think that's my memory. Um, uh, that, that's the two families. Um, do you remember the, uh, the, oh my God, now I am reading off. In the short story, The Cask of Amontillado, Edgar Allan Poe. Po, 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 po. Just a terrible, terrible story. I read that in high school, but um, you know, juxtaposes wine and the bones of dead people. Uh, the Amontillado. Anyway, uh, so that's juxtaposition. I love it. I love juxtapositions uh, in as a literary device, and I recommend you guys all practice that today. And then finally, uh, last and certainly not least, um, Roxanne. I see ya. Uh, yeah, take communion. Yes, yes, prayer. Uh, being spiritually aware. That is an awesome one. Uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, spirituality. I've, I've reconnected with with uh, my spirituality, with the universe, with God. And last year, it's been just a revelation for me. Uh, and then uh, the book, uh, The Road Less Stupid. Uh, Keith Cunningham. I just started reading this. It's already been awesome. Like, 
uh, just I feel like these a lot of these books, especially this one, it's just like it's written about me. Um, <laughs> when you stop and think about it, what sabotages our dreams and causes most of our problems? And ensuing dumb tax it talks about the dumb tax and the stupid financial decisions you made in your life, and, and think about those numbers, what it cost you. And I did that today and started crying. But anyway, um, what 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 caused most of our problems are excessive optimism and emotional belief in magic pills, secret formulas, and financial tooth fairies. All balloons look good when they're filled with hot air. Uh, here it is on a bumper sticker. Emotions and intellect work inversely. When emotions go up, intellect goes down. It's so damn true. It's so damn true. Think about your emotional response when you're like, someone pisses you off and you send this email back, right? Well, that's a good idea. Let's memorialize my stupidity like in an email, like, you know, or, you know, put it in a comment section on the internet because you know it goes away then, right? Anyway, when emotions go up, intellect goes down. Optimism is a deadly emotion in the business world. Warren Buffett said it best. Optimism is the enemy of the rational investor so anyway that's just an excerpt from the book that's like right in the beginning so uh, i just thought it'd be fitting that i'd talk about it uh today it gives you a little taste the road less stupid uh good great read so far so anyway that's what i got today but yeah uh put something in the comments engage if you want one of these bomb ass shirts tumor tails um you know we've got gray and then this red pinkish color i like the red pinkish color better uh but that's my choice um but yeah Good comments. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, Nancy, Andy, I got to blow out of here. My, uh, I'm supposed to be home probably like now. So, all right, thanks for tuning in. Glad to get back on. I cannot see my screen because of these glasses, so I have to end the live video like this.